So welcome to another video where we're looking at using Flutterflow and BuildShip together. Now in this particular video, there's lots of interesting techniques in here on how to use a Flutterflow and BuildShip together, where we're actually uh, creating custom data type data, and we're actually sending it down to BuildShip for further kind of analysis and decision. And in this particular video, we're gonna focus on an example where a user can have an application running where they can actually persist the data on the actual device as well. So there's no external database being used. They store all the data on their device, and then when they're ready, they can then sync that down back via a build chip workflow down into Firebase for safekeeping. The user can carry on, they can make changes to that data, and of course, when they're ready, they can sync that back down via the workflows into Firebase. And of course, when they want to delete all the data on their device, they can then retrieve it all back from Firebase via a build chip workflow back to their device. So there we go, that's a million miles an hour explaining exactly what this application is gonna do. Hopefully you enjoy it, hopefully you'll learn something here on using BuildChip and Flutterflow together. And the next bit, we'll then now look at what we are gonna present with inside this application. So hopefully you enjoy it, uh, let's get cracking. So let me show you the scenario then on screen then. So um, hopefully it's pretty clear as day to exactly what this application is gonna do for us. Now, um, let's swiftly move on. I'll explain the kind of steps that we're gonna take. So here we go. So there's our Flutterflow application. You can see here, we've got a couple of notes on the actual screen there. Now, of course, the user can create, read, and update these notes persisted on their local device. No external database is used here. Now, what they'll do is um, all of these notes are stored inside the application state, okay? So they're using custom data types, which um, are kind of all the fields that's necessary to then persist those with inside application state. The user's gonna come along when they're ready, they're gonna to wanna to sync that using um, a build chip workflow. So I'll go into the actual settings of the application, they'll fire a button, and then of course that's gonna make an API call, that's gonna invoke then a build chip workflow, and of course that build chip workflow will make a number of decisions, and then ultimately we'll be then storing the data down with inside a Firebase, uh, Firebase Firestore database. So that's what will happen. Of course, the user can come along, they can start making changes to that data, and then when they're ready, it will then keep that data then in sync and go via this workflow down into Firebase. So that's that particular scenario, of course. Now, there is also a scenario where um, they you can actually then delete all of the data from within inside your Flutterflow application. And then what will ultimately happen there is that the user will then uh, press a button with inside the UI. That will then invoke an API request down into the build chip workflow, which obviously will then go down into Firebase. It will then pull out all of the records are necessary, and then it will return that back to our Flutterflow application. Now, the key thing is, is of course, is the data that is stored um, will be based against a user ID, which will be generated at the very start of the application. So of course, there's no authentication that is being required here. This is purely uh, keeping a persistent uh, variable within inside your Flutterflow application, which will be your, your user ID that will be used to then, um, to be referencing the data that gets stored with inside of Firebase. So that's it um, uh, quite quickly uh, going through the steps. And of course, I'll walk you through all of that process. Um, so I've already built the basic Flutterflow application to get started. So that is a fully uh, running kind of sample application. Um, it's all allowing you to do all the create, read, update, and delete uh, operations. It does not do the syncing yet with a build chip. We're gonna work through that together with inside this application. So certainly clone that project and then you'll be ready to follow along in this particular video. Video. So you can see here, here's a couple of things that we're obviously covering through this particular video here. Um, and the main thing is, is, is really at the bottom, there's many different ways, of course, to implement similar kind of solutions. Really what I'm trying to sort of put across in here is really how you're using Flutterflow and BuildShip together, because particularly when you're using custom data types, because chances are you're gonna be want to be using custom data types within inside your own uh, Flutterflow application. And there's some low code in here that shows you how to kind of, um, uh, kind of convert the custom data type uh, data into then a JSON request that goes down into build 
microchip and then of course then how do you then handle the api response back into flutterflow how do you convert it back to a custom data type um, for then display with inside flutterflow so all of those techniques are really really useful for you to learn if you've not really done that kind of stuff before so um that's pretty well much it and just finally then a little bit about me obviously i'm a, a flutterflow ambassador in the europe um so please do hit me up on any of those social media channels there of course and uh, and uh, hopefully i'll be how uh, hopefully be able to help with inside the community as well so without further ado let's get into the video the next segment we're going to look at demonstrating to you the application running and uh, and then we'll start working on the build itself so without further ado let's get cracking OK, so let's now talk through how this application actually works in a more demo style. So you can see here I've got the running application. I've got it running up in test mode. I've clicked on the little tab here for the actual notes itself. You can see I've got no notes actually installed inside this application. Now, if I hit the little plus option here, I can now create some notes. I'm just going to create some notes here just to demonstrate how the application works. OK, so I've now added all of my notes. OK, so traditionally now I can come in here. I can click on this test title two here. I can actually now make some further um, sort of uh, sort of changes here. This test is for real like that. Hit save and you'll see here that that gets then reflected with inside the actual UI itself. So that's good. I can update the notes and I can work pretty independently. There's no uh, any comms going on. There's no database in the background here other than persisted storage using custom data types with inside your Flutterflow application so that's great so you've kind of got this offline ability to kind of store data with inside your application so that's great now if i look over in firebase here you can see i've got nothing in here whatsoever brand new firebase instance here nothing is there whatsoever what i can do is i can move over this little cog option just down here and i can now sync these notes to the server so if i just hit that this is going to make a call out to build chip it's going to go through various sort of checks of inside the workflow and if i now go back over to the actual project here if i just wait for them to appear there it is all now all loaded and you can see they there are the three notes that I've actually now got created. So what I can now go back over to my application, I can now go back to my notes here and I can now make a change. If I now go back to the first one here and I just take that description out and just to prove before I hit save that if I just find that one here, here's test title, there is that that description there. If I go back here and I hit save, you'll see now that if I go back into my Firestore collection, you can see that that still is there. So you can see here that I'm definitely not saving this back to Firebase. So of course I can now carry on as a user. I can kind of do my thing. I can kind of come along. I can go to this one here. I can delete this. Um, I could go back to this number two here. I can then mark this as complete and it's all happening on the local device. Now, as we said, nothing is changing here at this moment in time. I can go back over to my cog here and I can now sync these notes to the server. Hit the little sync option. I can go back to uh, Firebase here and you can see now that I've got that reflected. That one that I deleted has now disappeared. And of course, one that I marked as complete, which is the second one here, is now marked as complete. So that's great. So that means that I've got this ability now to kind of do everything local on my device. And when the time is right, I can then sync those back to the server. Now, what I can do is I can also delete these notes on the actual device. So I've hit the little delete option here, hit confirm, go back to my notes and they've all magically disappeared here, of course. But of course, there actually are on the server i can go back here i can then click on the little refresh option here that's now going to go back through the workflows and it's now going to pull all of those notes back in to my device in exactly the same state as what they were persisted within inside firebase so there we go so we've got a, a genuine application that's running here with inside flutterflow we've got some workflows that we've created with inside buildship that's all hooked up to firebase so let's now move into the meat of the video and let's show you how it all kind of puts together so as I said at the beginning of this particular video, I've created this application which you can clone and you can be right where you need to be in order to follow along with this particular video. Now what we've got here is we've got an application here which generally functions. You can do all of the activities that you saw previously. The only difference is, is you cannot sync those yet through the workflows or through to Firebase because that's going to be the focus of this particular video. So we're not going to focus so much on how to actually build this as a Flutterflow application, but more about how do we work with build chip how do we work with firebase and how do we kind of make all of this a kind of connectivity sort of function that's the focus but in order to understand that there's some bits of this application that is probably worth pointing out in this particular segment so once you've cloned it this is what you'll have and let me just talk you through some of the key areas so let's first look at what's not in here so we go to the actual apis here you can see we've got, we've got no apis in here at all we're going to create a couple of apis for build chip we'll come back to that 
I can also come over here to some app state variables. You can see here we got this uh, this app state variable which is just a string which is a user ID. Now there's no authentication in this particular application, but what we are doing is when the when this actually application loads up, we're generating a random string which will then be persisted with inside the actual application. Now that will therefore be used to then identify the notes that are actually held with inside of Firebase. We can tie a device and we can uh, sort of tie the notes of a particular user together. So if, anybody, if this is a multi-user application, then of course those notes that would be stored would therefore be unique. So we've got that and then of course here you can see I've got this notes uh, kind of app state variable here. This is containing a list of notes. I'll show you those in just a second. That's our custom data type. The rest of these kind of uh, values here don't worry about at all. They're just providing some kind of state back to the application, but they're not really needed to be discussed in this particular video then um, if I now move actually over to the actual data types here you can see here that I've got one called note I've created this data type uh, data type called note no and this is what we are storing with inside our firebase a database and of course this is what is used with inside the UI itself so we're generating an ID, we're generating our own ID with inside this particular application. We're storing the user ID, of course, title, description, very self-explanatory. The update count is really just every time we do an update of a note, we're just incrementing it by one, two, three, four, etc. Um, it's really serving not much purpose, really, but it's just more so you can eyeball and see those updates happening with inside Firebase. But generally, you probably wouldn't have that inside an application. Created is just a timestamp, so that just allows us to t uh, put a, a date and time against this particular note is complete is really that kind of that checkbox on that bottom bar that comes up is this note complete so just simply true or false mark for deletion that's pretty obvious once we hit the actual delete icon what we're doing is is we're actually marking it for deletion and then of course then that's then not visible within inside that actual list it almost looks like to the user that that actual uh, note has actually disappeared and this is in sync this is quite an important value here so every time we make a change with this note within inside our Flutterflow application we're going to set is this is in sync to be false and that allow us then with inside work with inside the workflow of inside build chip to actually say well actually this note it's not in sync we now need to do something with it we either update the existing data or we actually create a brand new note so you'll see that happen a little bit further on so this is pretty well much all of the values that we are using with inside our application if I go back to the widget tree here let's have a look at some of the components and pages that we got here so the one that's the most important is the uh, the actual notes page here itself you can see here a very very simple sort of uh, page here which is kind of just showing you a kind of a column here that's got a kind of some children and these are all of the notes you can see here it's not a component or anything like that we're just displaying some widgets this this basically just showing you the notes that's actually on the actual page itself and of course the little plus button here if I just go to the bottom navigation bar here if I now just scroll down here we've got this on tap central button um, if you are interested in understanding how that navigation bar is being built please do have a look on some previous videos on my channel where I talk about actually how to create this and I'll walk you through that completely but here is this on tap central button this is just going to show the bottom sheet which which will then show the actual uh, the note editor component which is the one that we're going to look at now note editor component and that is that bottom bar that comes up and of course what we're doing here is we're just allowing the user to fill these values in they hit save and of course some actions would then take place with inside the action flow editor which will kind of check to say well okay is this a new note or is this an updated note um, if it's a new note then all we're really doing is we're just setting all of the values and then we're saving that note we're actually inserting it actually into the actual um, the actual index within so we're inside the actual app state list that we've got stored which I just showed you earlier on with inside the app state variables so that's over here so this is going to add it to list and this is handling the update here so update in this route and if, if this route is going to be a brand new note so there's some other sort of bits that sort of happening here as well within each of these we've kind of got um, various fields being set as I said previously and um, there's a couple of important bits to sort of point out as well that I need to generate a unique ID for this particular note so you can see here I've got this sort of custom function which just generates this like random string um, that would, would never be uh, will always be unique generally and um, and then that's being applied as the ID so I'm just kind of simulate that that kind of that ID that document ID that you might get created with inside Firebase and here of course I'm just pulling out the app state variable here the user ID I'm just tying this note specifically to this actual user who is using the actual application so that's really what I'm doing here it's really really quite straightforward 
Once that is then done, it's then uh, on hitting save, it's then stored with inside the application state variable. And of course, then the notes would then be displayed here. And when I actually click on each of these, now if I just go down to the actual action here, you can see the little, uh, the bottom sheet here. If I just uh, go to the actual actions itself, open up the action flow editor, I'm bringing up the bottom sheet at the bottom. And all I'm really doing is I'm passing in here as a, as a parameter here, the actual note itself. And then of course, the index, the position that it is in actually the app state variable because I'm gonna when I'm gonna to want to make an update I'm, I'm gonna to want to make sure I update the right note with inside the actual uh, the actual list is that we've got in the app state so that's about it I think that's pretty well much everything as a general walkthrough of this application again please do download it please do inspect it please do run it up have a little play and then hopefully you'll get an idea of how it functions and then very, very shortly, I'll touch on another really, really important part to this particular application is how do we shape up the data? How do we then pass that down through to build ship? And then, of course, when that data then comes back, when we retrieve those notes back, what do we do to kind of decipher what comes back from build ship and then reapply it to our app state? So there's some custom functions within inside this particular application um, that will actually will handle all of that for you. So I'll walk you through actually how all of that works very shortly. Okay, so as we're using Firebase with BuildShip, there's some setup that we need to do. Now, you might already have an existing project, or if you have not and you want to create a brand new one, head over to your console with inside Firebase. I'm going to create a brand new project. I'm going to call this one DP Notes. Let's hit continue. I'm going to toggle that off. I'm not interested in that. Let's create the project. That's going to take a few moments. Okay, let's hit continue here. And here we are, we should be right in there. So there we go. So we're all set up nicely there. The first thing I'm going to do is just move over to the actual build here. I'm going to go down to a Firestore database, just hit that. Let's just create our database here when it comes up. Let's hit the create database option. Okay, so just choose the location now. Of course, I'm in the EU. So I'm going to go to Europe here and hit next. And I'm going to start it in test mode here. We're not too worried about doing production. Hit enable. And we're just going to give that a moment to set up everything it needs. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. We're all set up there. Let's go over to the actual cog here. Let's go to project settings and we'll come back to that in just a moment. Okay, so now all that's set up, we now need to go over to build ship. Now we need to go into the project. We need to grab some detail there and then we need to then head over to the Google Cloud platform just to do a little bit more of additional configuration just to give some permissions for a build ship to work with Firebase with inside our workflow. So let's head over to build ship now. Okay, so here I am then in build ship. This is a brand new project that I've got created here we need to move over to the actual cog here and we need to go down to this section here where it says service accounts so just hit the little copy option there and then we need to then move over to the Google Cloud platform so just do a, a bit of a Google for it you'll come up with this particular screen once you're actually signed in now make sure you select your project up the top top left here once you've actually created it in Firebase it will then become available here just choose that and then we now need to move over to the actual hamburger menu here and we need to click on this I am and admin so just choose that okay so once this has come up choose the grant access option here now in that and um, what we've just added to the clipboard we need to paste in here so let me just paste that in there from a build chip there it is and then we need to now assign some roles so just choose the uh, select role here and we can now do a search so we're going to search for cloud data store user like that there it is just choose that one there we need to choose add another role so just choose that select this option here we now need to do a search for firebase admin sdk and we should see the option there there it is sdk admin service agent just choose that hit the save option updating and then we are golden so we should now find that build ship and firebase will now hopefully work in harmony together when we get to that stage of working with firebase so here we are then in build ship and this is where we're going to get into the meat of this particular video now of course with inside build ship what we need to do is we need to create our very very first workflow now this workflow is going to be the one that's going to actually do the syncing um, from a flutter flow itself is what's going to store our values with inside firebase now the key thing to remember here is that in this particular video i like to do things in a much more sort of walkthrough kind of way that's the style of the content i produce on my channel hopefully it's going to allow you to obviously follow along uh, in stages of course but feel free to speed me up at 1.5 times if you want me to go a little bit quicker so let's get cracking then we're going to create our first workflow hit the little plus here now i'm going to give this one a name i'm going to 
just double tap up here and type in that sync here like that. And then of course we need to invoke this actual workflow from Flutterflow. So this is gonna be a REST post request, an API call from Flutterflow, hit the add trigger, Hit, this one's already selected here, hit the add trigger. And of course, this is gonna be of a type post and we're gonna call this one sync. Quite simple, really, just call it sync. Now, in this particular workflow, we're not gonna actually pass any particular values in, or we're not gonna to want to at least pick up any of those particular values because what you would normally do is you come over to the three dots, hit edit, and with inside the request, you might actually go inside the body here, hit the plus, and start actually uh, creating the parameters that you would be passing into this workflow. Well, actually, all we're gonna be passing into this is really just an array of notes. So we don't actually need to configure anything here, so just cancel that. Don't save that right back to where we were. So what we now need to do is we now need to now move into a mode where we're now gonna do a loop. We're now gonna loop through every single one of those notes. So it could be just one, it could be 10, it could be 20, but we're gonna to wanna to go around in a loop. So let's hit the little plus here. Let's click on the actual loop node just here, hit the add node. And this is where we can now start setting everything up. Now, the items that we're gonna to need to pass into this, of course, is gonna come down from the post. Now, all we need to do is hit on the editor here and just delete these out there but on the variables we're going to want to go to the actual request this is the one just above and we're going to want to pick up the body the body right at its root level is going to have all of these actual uh, sort of notes we're passing in so just click away so we've now got that now we don't need to worry about concurrency because of course we're just going to run this in one loop completely within inside this workflow itself Okay, so now within inside this particular loop, this is where kind of all of the crazy stuff happens. Okay, so let's hit the add node here. Now with the first thing that we're gonna to want to do is we're gonna to want to check to see if the note that's coming in has the is in sync set as false. Because if it's false, we know we're gonna to need to do something with this particular note. If it says true, then we can just ignore it and then move on to the next one. Okay, we only wanna be dealing with the ones that is marked as false for is in sync. The way we do that is we need to create a branch, so just choose that, uh, hit the add node here, uh, just hit the little true here, and this is where we now need to just put a little bit of uh, a bit of code in here now to pick out that is ink, uh, sorry, is in sync uh, value from the note that's being passed in. That's now part of this loop. Now we need just need to hit the little uh, pen here, delete the little true out here. Now how do we get access to that item that's now part of that loop? Well, really straightforward. We go to variables, we then hit on the actual loop here, and of course it's the item that we're interested in. So just choose item. Now if you remember, there is that property property that I've got set with inside the note called uh, is in sync. So I'm just going to choose this and type this in is in oh, is in sync just like that. Okay, so that's now going to be passed in, but we need to check for it being false. So a simple way to do that is just at the beginning here, just go right to the, the beginning and let's just put in a little uh, explanation mark in there as well. So we're gonna look for it to be false. If it's false, then what it's gonna do is gonna end up in this then direction down here. If it's true, then we're just gonna move in this direction here. We're gonna completely ignore it with inside the loop. So next up, now we're in tight into this positive territory here. So we're just gonna assume here that we've actually got a note that now needs to be synced. We, ne we now need to do a little check. We need to check to see is this a kind of like a deletion? Are we actually gonna remove it from Firebase or are we gonna actually perform either um, a create or an update to a, a new a new note that's being passed in? So we can just do a simple, another branch check. Hit the little plus here, go to branch here, hit the add node. Now if I just move this over here, there we go. Go to true here, let's just hit the little pen. Let's delete that out here. And this is where we now need to do a check. So of course on the variable, we're gonna pick that up again. We're inside the loop. So just hit the little item, the little sort of arrow there. Hit the item here, we've got that. And this is where we now need to look for that next value of inside our note itself. So this one I think is called is marked for deletion like that. So that's fine. So if it is marked for deletion, if it's true, then we're gonna head in this particular direction. Of course, if it's false, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna move down here. So let's handle the true condition. Okay, so let's hit the little plus here. Now this is where we start now moving into the world of Firebase. Okay, so just uh, do a search here for Firebase like that. 
uh, if I just hit the fire store and then now we now need to actually now perform this delete itself so let's move down to delete a fire store document hit the add now this is where we now need to complete some values now the project ID if you remember when we we're setting up the actual firebase project I mentioned to you to go over to the kind of the cog the settings there and if I move over to that you'll see this is the reason why because I need you to pick up this project ID so let's just go here let's just uh, copy this out here let's just do uh, an apple uh, apple c here just copy that and i can move back over to build chip itself and i'm going to paste that project id in just there so we've now got that now the collection now i'm calling this one just notes so i'm just going to uh, call it collection that is the document collection that we've actually got within firestore it's going to be called notes and of course everything inside that is going to be the actual document itself now the document id of course is going to be just that made up id that um, it, it's associated with every single note that we pass in so i just need to hit on the little pen here and click on the actual variable again we need to pick up that loop item again so just move there and choose the loop item that's just there now course if you remember from the actual schema uh, that the custom data type of our note we've just got a, a, a field called ID so that is the ID that's going to be associated with the actual document of course now that is all we need to do this is now going to work its magic it's actually going to delete that from our collection if it exists so that's perfect that's actually all we need to do so let's now move on to then the else condition where we need to then start thinking about how do we actually then update or create new firebase data so let's move on to that now okay so we're going to use the power of build chip ai to help us here because we need to create a node that's going to allow us to set that is in sync field with inside our node to now be true we want to save that with inside Fire, firebase um, as being true so the way that we do that is we just hit the little plus option here now we need to now generate with ai so i'm just going to type in my statement here that i needed to produce so I need a node that sets the property is in sync of an input object to true. So it's going to allow me to then bring in that loop item. It's going to set is in sync value to be true. And then I can then use that then when I actually then create or update the actual Firestore document. So just hit generate and fingers crossed it will go away and do its magic and it will return me back a node where I can pass that in. Okay, so it looks like it's done its magic. Let's have a little look at the code here. Of course, if you are a coder, then you look at this and think, oh yeah, that's really easy. I could have typed that, but of course we don't need a type because uh, if you're not a coder, it doesn't really matter. But that's exactly what we, you can see it's doing here. It's passing in the input object, it's setting its value is in sync to true and then returning it back to ourselves. We can just hit save, that's fine. Let's just move back down here. Let's click away. So we've now got that. Now let's hit our next node. Now this is the one where we're now gonna create our Firestore document or of course our Data if it already exists hit the fire store here now we need to just choose the right one so let's now create a fire store document here it is just hit add there it is now the project id we just need to pull from what we did over here so just copy that let's paste that in the project id now the collection that we need of course everything is going to be within inside the notes because that's what we got just over here and we said earlier and then of course a document id very similar to this just choose a little pen here go to variables go to the actual uh, the actual loop itself we're going to go to the item and we're just going to grab the id now i could have actually referenced the actual set is in sync property up here i could have done exactly the same thing there of course because it's just going to return back the same object but with that property obviously updated but i thought i'd keep it uniform with the uh, the other selection that we got up here now of course we're just going to set true here so of course that will just allow us to then kind of merge uh, any, any sort of values that we've inside our document that maybe weren't there or anything that was not set then it will just merge that with that actual document so next up we now need to choose the data so choose data here now of course we just need to delete that now the data is going to come from this object here the set is in sync property now that's going to return back that object that is what's going to be then persisted with inside firestore so that is pretty well much it now of course if we come back down here again and we've made any changes we set merge here we'll just get all of those updates now reflected for us which is great now one final thing that we need to do here of course we're in this loop and we're going to keep going around in circles of course but at the end of that particular loop we're just going to then return back a status 200 here we're going to assume that something has actually happened hit the little plus here go to the return node choose add node and then just down here i'm going to set the status code to be 200 and then with the value i always like to return back something a little bit more positive to uh, flutterflow so just choose a javascript here and then let's just do little curly braces i'm just going to say status i can spell it right like that 
colon and then just say okay like that and i'm just going to put a little message in here as well and i'm going to say um, all notes are now in sync something like that it can be whatever you like there we go so that's going to get returned back and that is pretty well much all that we need to do in this iteration of this particular workflow. Now, of course, once you've actually uh, constructed your workflow and you're ready to go, of course, you can just hit the little ship option up here. That will kind of package this up, get it all deployed for us. And then, of course, what it will do then is return back this actual endpoint. Now, of course, we can copy the endpoint here, so we're going to get that. Um, we can also get it from just up here. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to set this endpoint up manually with inside Flutterflow, of course, but there is other ways to do it. We can actually, uh, when I actually hit the little shipped option there, you can see here that we've actually got this export API, so we can kind of grab hold of the details. We can import that into Flutterflow, but for now, we're just going to do it manually because I like to go things in a little bit more of a manual way, just so you kind of get an idea of how that kind of works in that particular way and how you kind of set things things up from from scratch so with it that's it that's all that we need to do here we can now head back over to Flutterflow and we can now start hooking this particular REST API call up with our Flutterflow action so let's go there now okay so back in Flutterflow then I've clicked on the API calls section here I'm now going to hit on the ads here and I'm going to create an API group you don't have to create an API group we've only got two API calls with inside this application but I'm going to choose API group and I'm just going to give this a name so I'm just going to call this one I'll just call this one build chip something like that and then in the base URL I'm just going to paste what I copied to the clipboard before but the difference is of course I'm just going to delete off the forward slash sync so it just it says the actual main base URL that's all that we need to do hit the add group like that that's all done now with inside this little toggle here we now need to add the api call so just choose add api call and i'm just going to call this one sync like that now with the endpoint i've just deleted it but the forward slash is already there i'm just going to put in sync so of course any other endpoint that you use, uh, sort of add here any more apis then they'll all have the ability to use the base one which is from up here and of course i've then got the api endpoint set individually now of course this is going to be a post request so just choose post now we need to create a variable here so go to add variable so i'm going to choose a uh, called notes here now the type is going to be of type json and i'll explain a little bit more about that in in due course now of course this is going to be a list because we're going to bring in a list of notes and then in the body we need to choose body and we're going to choose this to be json and we're just going to drag and drop notes actually into uh, between the two curly braces just like that just hit format and uh, oh i just need to delete those out sorry just keep the little curlies out hit the format and that's all being validated I'm just going to pass in this straight array of all of our uh, our notes with inside the actual body of this message so hit the add call that is all done so we are good to go so and we can do a little test actually we can just test this now we're not going to get anything come back um, now we might get some errors come back we might need to go back to build chip and kind of think what have we actually done here but we can give this a quick while and go to response and test we can say uh, test api call we can just select that in fact i need to give this just an empty array just like that hit test api call what's going to happen well okay well Things aren't looking too bad there. Okay, hey, it may not have gone actually into the actual body of the actual workflow, but you can see here I've got my status message coming back. So that's a good, good start. So of course, if you didn't get that come back and you've got some kind of error that's come back, then be please do go and check the workflow of inside BuildChip. Make sure you've got everything set up just as you saw in the previous segment. And of course, you can then uh, come back, try that again. And hopefully this is what you should see uh, before we actually even pass any notes down. So at the very start of this video, I mentioned that this is a low code sort of video. OK, so we can't get away with not writing any code for this particular application. So what we need to do is we need to talk a little bit about how do we kind of shape up our data that we've got as a custom data type data. This in the app state variable. How do we shape that up to then send actually down to build chip? Now, the, the easiest technique is to actually create a custom function because it's going to allow you to kind of manipulate the kind of data, shape it up how you want it before we send it down to build chip let's head over to the custom functions here on the left hand side so you can see here and um, with inside the actual project which you will have available to you you can see i've got a couple of different functions we've got this one called convert notes to json and convert json to notes let me talk a little bit about convert notes to json so this is what's going to get called when we go to hit that little sync button okay we're going to pass in 
our list of our application state notes that we've got stored, so everything that the user is seeing, we're going to pass into this custom function. And what that is going to do is that's going to go through each and every one of the notes in there. It's going to take out the value that we've got and it's going to map it to like a JSON object. It's going to shape it up in a particular way that we can then pass down um, to BuildShip. And we can, of course, we can customize, we can take certain things out if we don't want it. We can manipulate data before we actually send it down to BuildShip. But um, this is quite an important part part to the overall process. So um, do get familiar with this because these are the type of techniques that no doubt you will put into your own applications when you are shifting sort of more sort of data type, sort of set data with inside of uh, Flutterflow down in the right way actually down into build chip so it doesn't really take much code do take this as your baseline for this any work that you're doing inside your own projects and it'd be really really straightforward for you to kind of uh, sort of change what you need but this is kind of like all of the custom data type mappings here i'm basically saying look here's the id title description this is everything that build chip is going to see and of course i'm just basically saying that everything with inside my custom data type id title description is mapped to each of these the only thing you can see here that with the actual date here I can't I need to actually convert it to here in this example I've created it just a normal string I've converted the date and time to a string which I'm passing down into build chip and of course that will then be persisted with inside the fire uh, stored database and of course when it comes back then I'll convert that back to a date and time object which then Flutterflow understands but everything else is all really really straightforward so there we go and then what it's what it's going to do is is then going to then return this back then as a as like a dynamic list which can then be used and then we can then pass that into the api request so let's go over and do that now let's now call this function pass in the application state so then we can then head over to uh, then build chip and we can see that come in when we actually invoke that button Okay, so let's hook our action up to our sync button. So let's move over to the uh, settings page, choose the sync button that we got there. Let's go over to the actions and open up the action flow editor. Now the first action I'm gonna add in is an API call. So just choose API call here. Let's give our API call a name as result. So I'm just gonna call this uh, sync result, something like that. The group call name, we need to say build ship. Of course, the endpoint that is by there by default is the only one that's there is selected as sync. And now we need to then handle the variables. This is the information that we're gonna pass into this API call. Now we know that we've got this variable called notes because we set that previously with inside the API section. Now with the value, this is where we now need to call actually out to our custom function that we just spoke about in the previous segment. So just move down here to custom functions and we want to do convert notes to JSON. So just choose convert notes to JSON. Now that function itself is now going to ask us here for that argument that we need to pass in. Now we need to go into our app state here, which is app state, pass in the notes. So this is all of our notes is being created by the user. We just hit confirm. And that's all that we need to do. Just hit confirm there and we are in a good place. So we know that hopefully we'll get the success and that we now need to move here. Now, once we've actually uh, kind of got our notes kind of sent down, then we're going to get that response come back from build chip where we're just going to want to show like a snack bar message. So if we got that status 200 come back, then we can actually set the snack bar. So just choose plus here, go to add action. Let's just choose a snack bar here, show the snack bar. Let's just put success in here. In fact, let's give this a bit more uh, of a meaningful name. What I'll do is I'll actually hook onto the message that comes back from our API. So choose API sync result, choose JSON body, choose the JSON path. And if you remember in that status message from build chip, I just said that it's gonna be um, a dot message like that. Okay, just hit confirm. So we know that's gonna be then displayed. Let's have a look at the colors here. So let's have a background color here. We're gonna say green, so let's choose success here. Then in the primary text, maybe we're just gonna make this one white. So let's just choose the white color there for, for good measure. So there we go, that would be the snack bar that showed. Um, of course, if things don't go well for us down at build chip and something goes wrong, um, although we're not really handling any sort of error conditions, we can just copy that action, just go here, just paste that in here. And of course, we're just gonna select this now we hopefully will get an error message come back so the object should be shaped um, just as we need but we're just going to change the background color here and we're just going to change that to then maybe the error background color 
So that is our API. That should be all ready to go. So if I just hit close. So what we can now do, let's now um, fire the application up. Let's create a note and let's now try syncing it with BuildShip and we can have a look in BuildShip to hopefully show that we haven't actually got any problems. And ultimately, hopefully, we can go to Firebase and see our notes displayed. Let's go and do that now. Okay, so here we are in test mode. Let's go to the notes here. We've got no notes at the moment. Let's just add a note in. So let's just do test title one and just do test description like that. Let's hit save changes. So there it is, that's great. Let's go into the cog here. Let's now attempt this sync to server. Let's see what happens. Oh, okay, so we've got a little bit of a, a bit of a problem is in sync. So we got looks like we've got an error coming back. Well, that's fine. We don't mind having an error coming back. Let's see what is going on with inside build chip. That is the beauty, of course, of live coding. So what we can do, we can go to the actual open here um, of the actual log. So hit the refresh down here on build chip. And um, you can see here that there is a, an invocation that I did previously. There's this fail though. Let's have a look here. Let's see what's going on here. So it's reporting about this is in sync um, actual uh, property. It seems that it can't actually find it. And it's pointing out here, it says that it's trying to set it with inside the set is in sync property. So is it that we've actually got our name wrong? So let's actually have a look at, let's just open up this so we can actually see what our input data looks like. So we just scroll up here. You can get an idea of the data that's kind of coming in. So there's our notes. So let's have a look here. Is in sync. So that's looking pretty good. I can't see there's any issues with that. So we've got the note that's come in there. So there could just be a, a problem with that particular node. So we know that we've kind of traveled down in this particular direction. And we know that we've met this condition because we've ended up down in this particular direction, but there's clearly something that doesn't like there about um, our problem. So it looks like we've lost our input object. Now that could have just been me as a mistake. I didn't actually set that previously. So there's clearly, that's the great thing. We've done a little bit of debugging there, actually with inside build chip and we've worked out what the problem is. So let's now actually set that. So this, if you remember, was the actual loop and it was the item there. So we've got that in there. Let's just click away. So we've now got that in there. Let's now adjust a ship this again. There we go. That's all good. Let's go back to a Flutterflow test mode. Let's try that again. Let's now uh, hit the sync option. Okay, doesn't seem okay. There we go. All notes are now in sync. So that looks positive. So if we now move over to uh, kind of Firebase, let's move over to the actual uh, Firestore database here. And uh, well, there we go. Look at that. We've got our note created. Our document is there and there is all our details. So let's now have a quick check and let's go back to Flutterflow. Let's now make a change to the actual note. Let's see if it keeps it in sync. So let's call this test title two. Let's hit the save. In fact, let's mark it as complete as well. Let's hit save changes. Let's go back here. Let's now sync that across. We've got a message has come back. Let's go back into Firestore and we can see that it's marked as complete and our title has been updated to test title two. So that is looking great. Let's go back here. Let's just do one further check here. Let's just do the deletion. Hit the delete there. Go back to the cog. Let's do the sync. Okay, there we go. Let's go back into the notes and there it is. Our document has disappeared. So there we go. So we had a light, slight little error there. Now I um, apologize if you had spotted that on a previous part of the recording that I didn't go and set or it just disappeared magically. I don't know what happened, but um, it was good that we had an error because we was able to then fault find together in this particular scenario. Right, so that's great. Let's now move on to the next bit. Okay, so next up, it's workflow number two. And this one is all about restoring our notes back to our Flutterflow application. So let's now create that workflow. Let's hit the little plus here. Now double click on where it says the title, Untitled Workflow. Let's type in Restore, that's the name. Hit the Add Trigger, and we're gonna choose a REST API call again, just like we did previously. Now the method here is gonna be a post, and we are going to give it a path of Restore, just like that. Now what we need to do is we also need to tell this REST API call about the parameter that we're gonna pass down with it when we invoke it, and this is gonna be the user ID, and this is gonna be important because with the user ID, we're gonna to wanna to go into our Firestore database, and we only want to return back the notes that are applicable to that particular user. So the way that we do that is we click on the three dots, hit edit, and then we go to the request here and we tell the body about this parameter that we're going to pass in. So with that selected, just hit plus here. 
choose where it says rename new output. Let's just remove the outs out of that there. Just gonna call this a user ID, just tab down to the label. And this is gonna be a user ID, just like that with an uppercase D. So there we go, that's all set and it's gonna be a string. Just hit the save, just clear that. And next up, we now need to do our Firestore query. So let's hit the little plus here and we're gonna go and type in a Firestore just on here like that, choose the Firestore. And we are gonna to want to query the collection. So this is the one that we need here, this Firestore collection query. Hit the little add. Now we need to put our project ID just as we did previously and I've got that already in my clipboard so I'm just going to paste that in so just pull that again in for you from your Firebase project here. Now collection we know these are called notes like that that is great and next up we now need to then talk about a little bit about the filtering so this is where we need we need to now create a filter that's going to say right okay if you're you if you pass in this particular user ID then only return back the notes that are applicable to me. So let's choose the filter here. And you can see that it's already pre-filled this in for me, which is pretty good. So with the actual field, we know we've got one called user ID, which is with inside our document. Now, the value, we need to now just remove out the double quotes there because we're working in JavaScript and we now need to put the variable in. So just choose variable. We wanna go down to the request and here is the body and this is the one that we created previously. So just choose a user ID. And then the operator, we want this to be equal to, okay, so we need to put a double equals in here as well. So definitely, if you're looking to do different kind of filtering and stuff like that, do go and have a little Google on how the uh, operator is gonna have a look at the documentation. You'll see that there's not equals to and all that kind of stuff. So we're just gonna use equals to that should be good enough for us now on this particular sample I'm just going to put a, li a limit of 50 to come back here um, but of course you're going to need to consider your options in terms of um, how your application is going to work how much data you're going to want to come back and then maybe use cases where you would need to handle maybe in batches and all that kind of stuff but of course that's more advanced coverage um, with inside this particular workflow we're just going to keep it quite simple for now and just put a limit of 50 to come back so I'm not gonna put anything in the order by, I'm not really too worried about the order that these are gonna come back in in this particular application, but of course, but do hover your mouse over kind of these kind of like um, sort of names here and it'll give you some uh, clues to exactly uh, what you can actually use there to kind of um, filter or an uh, order by uh, respectively. So that's all good, that's all set up. That hopefully will then pull back all of those particular uh, uh, objects from the Firestore collection. We now need to return it back to our Flutterflow application, hit the little plus here we now need to hit the return hit the add node and we set the status code to be 200 so just choose the pen here just choose this to be a javascript and again we're going to do what we had before so status is going to be uh, an okay here so of course we're just really just worrying about the kind of the happy days sort of path here we're not sort of covering any errors or anything like that but of course feel free to extend this particular workflow of course to cover you know there might not be some notes or anything like that you can return back a, a different kind of message back to the user now we need to now going to choose the term result here Okay, it could be anything you like. I'm just going to call it a result. It could be data or whatever you like. And of course, here the variable, we need to now say it's the Firestore collection that's, that's, that's kind of coming back. So just choose the Firestore collection and then that should actively return that back. So just select that. So that is all looking good. That is pretty well much all that we actually need to do with this particular workflow. Okay, so I'm just going to hit the, uh, the ship option there. So that will then deploy this particular workflow. There we go. Now I'm just going to go back to um, Flutterflow here and I'm just going to create some notes here. Let's get some notes in the system. I'm just going to put test one, just put some random characters in there. Just choose another one. Let's just do test two like that. Hit save changes like that. Let's go to the cog here. Let's now just sync those. Okay, let's go over to Firebase. We can see that we got them in there. Now, if I just select each of these, you can see I've got my user ID. Now, um, incidentally, with inside the Flutterflow application, this user ID is set on the load of the actual application. So go and have a look at the homepage, go and have a look at the action blocks, and you'll see that what I'm doing is I'm generating a, uh, a random ID that's then persisted to then the app state variable, which this is where that is coming from. So just, uh, we're just I'm just gonna copy that value there. Let's just cancel that. I'm going to go back into build ship. Let's now try testing this particular workflow. So I'm going to go up to the test option. 
And with inside the body here, this is where I can actually now put that particular parameter in. So I'm just going to simulate what would be sent down from Flutterflow at this particular point. So let's just put the uh, the curly brackets in there. And um, I think it was just a user ID is what we uh, we selected. And then I'm just going to put a, a double double quotes in there. Let's just paste in that string. In fact, let's just uh, move that up there. So there we go. Let's now test the workflow. So there we go. You can see now that I've got this like little, uh, this kind of little uh, like icon here, this symbol, this in green, that's representing that things are looking quite positive. So if I just press that, I've got no results come back. So something is not quite right. The actual, the actual Firestore uh, collection has been um, uh, kind of been executed, but it hasn't actually returned me back any results. So what is going on? What have we got? Let's go in a little bit of a fault finding uh, exercise now. So let's see what's going on. So we're passing in. Let's have a look here. Filters. Let's go here. We're saying user ID. Um, the value is that. So I'm pretty sure that is the value that I passed in body user ID. And we've got a limit of 50 and we've got so I can't see any reason to why that's not particularly working. Let's just have a look here. I did get that right here. I might not have copied that properly. Actually, looking at that, it says E it says E A A D D. Let's just have a look at my test here. Did I accidentally delete one of the characters? Yes, I did. There we go. Brilliant. So let's now test that workflow again. There we go. You can see we've got some results coming back here. And then you can see here um, if I just press the little uh, uh, the little play option up here, which obviously just means that it's executed. You can see here I've got my notes that's come back. So this is really just a JSON response now that I hook on the end of. So again, great little feature of Inside Build Chip allows me to test these workflows. You can see when these mistakes occur, you can kind of quickly see, ah, OK, where well, is my problem? without me then having to go back into Flutterflow and then trying to work out from there. So um, we can isolate it just to the actual workflow that's actually causing the problem by running the test option up there. So there we go. So I think we're in good shape. That's perfect for us. So we can ship that. We know that everything is good. Let's go back to Flutterflow now and let's get this, um, let's get this all set up with inside the application. OK, so back over in Flutterflow, we're in the API call section where it says build ship. Just select that and then let's add the additional API call. Let's give this a name. So I'm going to call this one restore like that. It's going to be a post request. So just choose post and the name at the endpoint is going to be restore as that's what build ship has uh, now deployed for us. Now we're inside the variables. This is where we now need to add the user ID. So just choose a user ID like that. This is going to be of type string because that's what we're going to pass in. Now within the body, if you recall, when we were setting this up with inside build chip um, we were setting this up in a way that it was going to take in a user id so we just need to match that here so double quotes user id like that then a colon and then a double a double a set of double quotes again and we could just drag the user id down into between them and that's all nicely set up for us all formatted and we are good so just add the api call like that so what we can do at this point, we can test this. We can go into our notes here. We can grab the user ID now like that. So let's just uh, copy this out properly this time. Let's move back over to uh, Flutterflow. Let's go to response and test. And of course, a user ID, we can just paste that in here. Let's test the API call and let's see if we get those notes back. We certainly do. So you can see here that we've got the status come back as OK. And then we have this uh, this kind of block for result here. We have all of our notes inside here. So we're going to have to do a JSON path into the result to actually turn all of those back. Now we can either down the bottom here, we can actually create the JSON path down here, but we won't do that. We'll reference it di directly actually with inside the area that we actually need it. So that's good. That's all set up for us. Let's go back to the widget tree. Now we need to now start working on this particular restore action here. So here it is. So let's choose the, re the restore notes button. Go to the actual uh, the action flow editor here. Open. So this is where the first action we're going to do is the API call itself. So just choose API call here. Let's choose the group there, build chip like that. And it's not going to be sync this time. It's going to be restore. And we need to pass in the actual parameter. Now, the parameter is actually the user ID and it's located within inside the app state. As I mentioned previously, it's set up as soon as the application loads for the first time. Choose user ID like that. Let's give this a meaningful name, API. Uh, restore notes result like that. Always get into the habit of uh, giving everything a good name. 
So now let's choose the little plus here. This is where we now need to add an action in and we now need to now set the notes back to our application state. But if you remember on a previous segment, we talked about a custom function. We also have a custom function to kind of do the reverse of what we were doing when we were sending all of this to BuildShare. Please do go and have a look in the application at that custom function and you'll see exactly what that's doing there. And of course, you could always copy and paste that custom function. If you're not quite sure what's going on, copy that actually into ChatGPT, for example, and say, could you please explain what this function does um, and then of course it will give you a breakdown on, on how all of that works so it's a great method of trying to reinforce that knowledge if it's something you're not super comfortable with from a coding perspective so there we go let's now do what i let's move into the states so let's just do a search for state here update state here choose the uh, the actual field that we need to set so this is going to be the notes and we need to select the update type here and we are going to actually we're going to set the value because we're going to replace all of the notes that we've kind of got on our device choose the value to set and we're going to go down a custom function here move down here and we're going to do the reverse here we're going to say convert json to notes so as i said it's the reverse just choose that now that particular function is expecting me to pass in a list now that list will be the responses coming back from build ship so we need to set that set that up here so let's just choose the selector here. Now let's go to the action output. Let's move down to the restore notes result there. Just select that. Now here it's going to be the JSON body and the available options is going to be the JSON path. So we're going to work our way down into the hierarchy of the response that comes back. Now um, in build chip, we said that it's actually a result. If you remember, that's what we just had coming back from our API response. Slightly different though here is that actually all we're interested in is actually just the actual, the, the core data that comes for the notes. Okay, so if you went back to build chip, and in fact, I'll quickly show you that now. You can see here, this is the shape that we've actually got coming back. So you can see here, this is every single note that we've got. Now, what Firebase is doing is returning back the ID of the actual record, and here is the actual data that we've actually got. Now, we want to kind of drill ourselves actually into this particular uh, kind of section of the actual response that comes back. And the way that we do that in Flutterflow is that what we do is we actually do like a, an a opening square bracket do a colon and then do a closing square back here and then we say data like that so that's going to get us right down to what we need and it's only going to return that back so that's just important to, to mention so just do confirm there and then that's all that we need to do just confirm that back here and you'll find now that our notes in us are inside our application state now will be completely wiped out and replaced with what's coming back from the server itself of course, one other little point to mention is that there is likely an enhancement you can actually make to this application where you could actually then be syncing the actual notes that come back and then checking to see if there's any, any, any differences there, anything that needs to be synced up. And then you can then only be replacing the ones that you are interested in. So it's kind of like a double syncing or reverse syncing that you could do there. But for now, we're just going to replace what we've got um, because it's a great example for this particular application. But feel free to extend the application if you're able to, to do that as an extra function. So once we've done that, that's good and um, we now need to then probably just return back a uh, like a, a, a notification back to the user that everything is pretty good so let's just press the add action here let's just move that out here choose that one let's now do a snack bar so we show the snack bar and just as we did before let's put a, a, the actual snack bar value in here so here we can now just pull out the the actual message i don't actually think, think we set a message actually with inside uh, build chip i don't think let's just have a little quick check here I don't think we actually did that here. Let's have a look. No, we just brought back the result, but I could have put a little um, a little message in here actually. And I could just say in here, message, um, uh, just something like that. So I'll just put that in there and I can actually then put a little comma after this. And then I could now ship that again. Uh, oh, just ship that again. There we go, just leave that to do its thing. Let's go back to Flutterflow. And that means I can now, with inside here, I can just pick up on that actual message that comes back. So let's just choose the value here. Let's go to the action outputs. Let's go to the restore note result. Let's go to the JSON body. Oh, JSON body. Let's go down to the JSON path. And then let's then just pull that message out. Just type a message in there. That's all that we need to do. Hit confirm. And uh, we're just gonna set some colors here, the background color. Now we know it's gonna be success here which is great. And then the primary text, let's just make it white for the time being. So that's all really good. Now, what we could do if in an, in an error situation, we can just, as we did before, just copy that action, paste that action just there. And of course we can just come in here. We can now return this back to an error like that. 
and then we can use that as that and of course if we had a, an error state coming back from our Azure application then what we can do is we could change that then to uh, hook onto the back of the message that we got coming back we did we haven't actually set that up but um you can you feel free to do that so that's all good to go so i think we can close that down i think we're ready to test this now let's um let's give this a whirl in test mode and let's see if we can then delete all the notes on the device and let's see if we can get those notes back so let's head over to test mode and do that now so here we are in test mode. Let's give this a whirl then. So we've got our our notes in there. Now we know that we got these already persisted on the server. So let's go to the cog here. Let's delete those notes out like that. Let's try restoring these notes. Hit the little option there. Okay, all notes returned. That's great. Let's go back to the list and there they are. So you can see now that we successfully gone into Firebase pulled those notes out, converted them via our custom function and then applied those to our application state and our notes are now displayed. So there you go. Hopefully you enjoyed this particular video. You can just go to see the power of using Flutterflow and BuildShip together. I mean, there was really quite a lot to cover in this particular video. There was a little bit of everything in there. We had a bit of Firebase in there. Um, we've uh, obviously had a full application that we connected up to those workflows. We've looked at data interchange between Flutterflow and BuildShip and vice versa as well. So that, again, there's lots of techniques that you can take into your own applications when building them with Flutterflow and of course, integrating them with BuildShip as well please do drop a subscribe on the channel please do like this video there's so much more coming in the future with using Flutterflow and BuildShip so until the next video I'll see you soon